Windchill by Corey Engel Prologue A Memory Cold wind stings Frank's face as the rumbling gets louder behind him. Squinting through tears after just watching his sister, Amy, getting swallowed up by the raging river of snow, fear courses through him as his heart pounds, threatening to beat out of his chest. The layers of rolling, sliding snow build as they charge down the mountain. A shadow casts over him as he attempts to escape. The ground beneath him shifts and slides as the avalanche pushes onward, and for a moment he is riding the snow like a wave before getting engulfed. The chaos within the avalanche tumbles him head over heels. After being violently wrenched, there is an agonizing pop in his right leg as the skis get tangled up together. Blinding pain grasps at him as he struggles to breathe in the dense snow as the avalanche settles. The snow packs tightly against his body, crushing his chest as if trying to squeeze out the remaining air. He knows he doesn't have much time and will suffocate soon. He struggles against the pain to loosen himself from the snow, but it is packed too densely and he is in too much pain to budge. Everything around him is silent and dark. He is buried deeply in the lairs suspended in what feels like an icy tomb. He begins screaming in sheer panic. Claustrophobia sets in as he his muffled cries turn into hyperventilating breaths as he waits to die. Chapter 1 The Coming Storm Tears stream down Frank's face as he attempts to gather himself, trying to push the awful memory from his mind. He thinks to himself angrily, It should have been me who died that day, not her. He takes a sip of his coffee he routinely drinks every morning and shudders at the thought of her slowly suffocating, unable to move while encased in the snow-built grave. Well, Rex, what do you say we start the day? He asks his loyal companion, a seven-year-old fox terrier, while stepping off of the wooden porch of the cabin he built many years ago. Rex perks up at hearing his name and begins excitedly wagging his tail. Let's see, what should we do first? he asks while moving through his vegetable garden, plucking a ripe tomato off its vine. He turns sharply, facing Rex, who trots up to meet him eagerly. He takes a large bite of the sweet and flavorful tomato before throwing the rest to Rex, who happily catches it midair. He wipes the juice from his hands on his tattered jeans and heads over to the well, located in the middle of the yard. He sets down his coffee mug and grabs hold of the winch lever. He begins rotating it, drying up the water pail while looking out onto the vast landscape of the mountainous valley he lives in. Thick timbers cover the mountainsides and roll down the slopes into the valley, surrounding a secluded shack in dense forest. The water pail reaches the top and he unhooks it before turning to fill the nearby water dish belonging to Rex. Rex charges over and begins lapping at the bull. He sets down the bucket as a cool breeze rustles the leaves on the ground as it moves across the yard. He looks up at the sky as the cold air brushes against his skin. Thick billowing gray and white clouds are cascading down through the valley. Snow clouds of enormous magnitude are on their way towards the rickety log cabin. He glances nervously at the roof. It has had many leaks this year which he has procrastinated to patch. The cottonwood, oak, and maple trees of the forest surrounding his home begin waving and whooshing as the wind intensifies. Shoot! We don't have much firewood, he says as he looks out at the timberline, which was about three quarters of a mile away. His eyes linger on a winding path leading through the field between the house and the forest. I didn't think we'd be getting winter storms yet, he says while feeling unprepared as he walks back to the small shanty to fetch his coat and gloves. He returns a moment later while donning his shabby leather jacket. All right, Rex, ready to go? He asks as he heads into his shed to grab an axe and some rope. Rex prances around, excited for the adventure, as Frank exits the shed carrying two items. He makes his way around to the side of the shed and unfastens a small weathered sled he uses for moving logs. With Rex at his heel, he trudges into the grassy field, making his way towards the forest line. Hurriedly, he marches while pushing the sled, trying to gain as much ground as he can before the storm arrives. The sled squeaks and creaks, complaints from all the past work it's done, as it slides across the semi-smooth grass. Chapter 2 The Gathering After a long march through the windswept field, Frank pushes the sled up next to a short tree. 
He pauses for a moment of rest from the exertion before he begins chopping it down. Rex explores nearby, sniffing around the ground in search of new scents. The short timber goes down quickly, and Frank heaves the whole of it onto the old sled. I hope this sled can hold up. I think we need a couple more, he said while shaking the sled slightly to test its stability. He starts in on a new tree when the sound of a loud nearby howl slices through the air, causing the hairs on the back of his neck to stand on end. Rex begins to growl defensively, and Frank motions for him to come by softly patting his leg. Rex slowly heads over while scanning the tree line with his eyes. That sounded close. I'm not sure I want to risk getting more wood, he says as he racks his brain trying to decide the best course of action. A second nearby howl, louder than the first, bellows out from somewhere in the forest. Rex whines and continues growling. Yup, I think we should get moving, he said worriedly. He quickly gathers up the rope and places it on the sled next to the axe, before he begins pushing the sled back towards the safety of their home. The clouds interrupt the sun halfway through the journey, and shortly after, snow begins to fall. He shivers in the chilling air, taking deep, rasping breaths, fatigue starting to set in. He glances back nervously, half expecting to see the pack of wolves charging out of the forest after him. The forest line darkens as the ominous gray and white clouds roll overhead. He arrives at the cabin and stops his sled near the chopping block next to the front porch. Rex heads over to his water bowl and begins thirstily lapping up the refreshing well water, while Frank sluggishly removes the tree off of the sled, trying not to damage it. Once the timber is laying on the ground, he ties the sled back up on the wall of the shed. He rushes over and begins splitting the log into smaller pieces, knowing he has precious little time before the storm's veil completely tears, releasing a paralyzing shroud of crystalline needles. Rex paused at the front door of the shack, eager to be let in. Frank sighs as he heaves the axe into a chunk of log before letting Rex inside. The wobbly front door squeaks loudly as it opens into the dark, unlit dwelling. The front door is on the west side of the large space making up the interior, with a small closet on the northwest corner housing a toilet. Rex trots inside, his nails clicking on the wooden floorboards as Frank closes the door and continues breaking down the lumber for the firewood. The blanket of snow has begun to fall heavily, the chill in the air turning to a frigid cold as the breeze evolves into a gust. He shivers and pulls his jacket tightly around himself as he looks up at the low gray clouds. Finished dividing up the lumber, he begins transporting the pieces of wood inside stacking them next to the fireplace located in the center of the back wall. Rex stays out of the way by jumping up onto the bed to take a nap, as Frank moves back and forth with the pieces. Once done stacking the freshly cut logs, Frank closes the door and lets out a sigh of relief. The darkness inside the cabin is almost absolute, and he decides to light a few lanterns hanging on the walls. A dim glow soon fills the shanty, casting a flickering light across the length of the shabby room, illuminating the uplifted queen-sized bed located in the northeast corner. The light dances around the metal knobs and utensils in the kitchen, which take up the whole of the south side of the room. A couple of gaps in the roof have begun to drip melted snow water onto the quickly dampening floor below. He notices the dripping of the leaks and hurries over to the cupboard under the sink to fetch two metal buckets propping them under the drips. He regrets his procrastination on patching the roof, again feeling unprepared for such an early blizzard. 